Hey, this is Motorcycle Grand Prix. Circuit of England. It's the British Grand Prix Motorcycle Championship for the 500cc motorcycles. Hello, I'm Paul Page with Johnny Rutherford, and the Grand Prix motorcycle is a fantastic machine. 500ccs developing about 140 horsepower, pushing a 250 pound motorcycle. They cost a prototype, brand new machine, upwards of $300,000. But, John, unlike your Indianapolis car, there's no roll bars, there's no protection for the rider. No, there's really not. You know, you just set atop of the bike without any safety restraints like we have in the race cars. And of course, sometimes you become detached from the bike, and when you do, you sail off one direction and the bike the other, and uh, chances of getting hurt are, are pretty great. Silverstone, 2.9 miles around, one of the fastest courses in Grand Prix motorcycle racing. They're flat out almost all the way. Almost all the way, Paul. You, the, to see the cornering power of these machines with, with the tires laid over, the bike is way over, the rider sometimes grinding off the edge of his boot, tearing the uh, leathers on his knee, and he's way down low, and it's really something I call it the ballet of motorcycle racing. Down trackside, covering the action in the pits and on the main stretch, journalist, motorcycle racing expert, Ian Norris. Ian? Thanks, Paul. I think the weather's going to be a big factor in today's race. During practice, we've had heavy rain, we've had dry periods. We've also had wind, and that could be dangerous because it blows across the open spaces of the Silverstone circuit, and it could catch the riders on the corners and throw them off. The course itself, a former bomber airfield in the Second World War. Eight turns, five to the right, three to the left. They leave the start-finish line and head down to a right-handed corner, Cops Corner, then up through Maggot's Curve, a slight bend to the left, and then into Beckett's Corner, a bit over 90 degrees. Yes, Paul, and you can see the hay bales lined up there as catch fences. Yeah, obviously, they get off here quite a bit. And then it's on to Chapel Corner, Paul, 130 miles an hour around this slight kink to the left. Down Hangar Straight, one of the fastest straightaways at 160 miles an hour. And then we're into Stowe Corner. Stowe Corner is a third gear turn to the right. Grandstands on the outside. Then they begin acceleration and head up toward Club Corner. After Club Corner, Paul, it's 130 miles an hour to Abbey Curve, a fifth gear left-hander. They leave Abbey Curve, then begin to touch top gear as they run to 160 miles an hour. And then around the famous right-hander Woodcut Corner. The Formula One cars would run a chicane here. But the motorcycles continue right on through the curve and back onto the main stretch again. The riders are ready. We're in the final second count. The engines are silent, waiting for the signal to go. Let's take a look at the front row. The pull, Raymond Roch. He crashed after he set quick time, but he says he's ready to ride. And then we have Didier de Rodigas in his first full year of Grand Prix motorcycle. Eddie Lawson sits alongside. He is the sure bet to win his first world championship in the Grand Prix bikes. And starting fourth, Randy Mimola, the winner of this race in 1980 and in his sixth year of Grand Prix motorcycle. Alongside Randy, Britisher Ron Haslam. He is the best qualified Britisher. He is their hope for a win here today. And in sixth, Virginio Ferrari, 12-year veteran of Grand Prix motorcycles. The seventh position is occupied by two-time world champion Barry Sheen, still recovering from a terrible accident here two years ago. In eighth starting position, Paul Lewis of Australia, seven-time Australian champion. So the field set and ready to go for the British Grand Prix. The engines are off. They're watching the countdown clock, a 30-second count. Then the machines are push started. Kenny Roberts, American world champion, had a terrible push start one year ago and failed on the first lap because of it. Riders now in position, everyone ready. The tension begins to mount. The crowd begins to quiet down as this beehive of noise will be unleashed with a green light. Riders ready, off their bikes. Final seconds counting, officials ready. Eyes on the light, the green light is on, and the British Grand Prix is underway. As the front row begins to accelerate away, they are clear and heading down toward top corner. Ron Haslam, the Britisher, jumps out into the lead. Boy, what a traffic jam, Paul. Look at these guys leaning over, trusting one another through that top corner. Beginning to accelerate now as they come off 
of Cobb. Look at Ron Haslam. He has a definitive lead here after only one turn. But Paul, they still look like they're taking it a little bit easy. They're not laying the bikes down quite as far as they could. And on number seven, the two-time world champion Barry Sheen, who was in that terrible accident here at Silverstone that almost took his life, has now moved up and is running in second place. He got a terrific start as well. DDA Derodicus is passing Sheen for second place now. Derodicus from Belgium was the world champion in the 250cc bikes in 1983, Paul. Derodicus now into second place, chasing Ron Haslam. That gives you a good idea of aerodynamics in this motorcycle sport. We don't normally think of aerodynamics in the use of the motorcycle, but what he did was draft Barry Sheen, used the draft to his advantage, and darted out and moved into second place. It is still Ron Haslam out in front as they come to the completion of lap number one. Haslam leads it, Rodriguez is in second place, Barry Sheen now in third, and American Brandy Mamola and Eddie Lawson lie fourth and fifth. It's something to watch these motorcycles clawing for traction. You can see them twitch. The tire is grabbing the ground and it's making the bike twitch and twist, and it's really something to see how much strain is put on the frame for these motorcycles. Well, the tires should be up to full operating temperature now, and the first lap at full speed to be taken as Ron Haslam leads the field in lap two. We'll be right back. Better way to come to a motorcycle race than on a motorcycle. How did that car get in there, Paul? Uh, there's one in every crowd. As we're back at the British Grand Prix Motorcycle Championship. I'm Paul Page with Johnny Rutherford. And Randy Mamola is on the charge. He's already around Barry Sheen. He now sets his sights on Radigas as he comes into second place. Randy Mamola comes to the inside, tries Ron Haslam. Haslam holds him off. The Americans are now moving up through the field. Boy, Paul, that is the way to ride a motorcycle. He had it all the way down against the fairing there taking it to the very last inch. Haslam, with some brilliant riding, is able to pull away from Mamola now. Mamola's still in second. Derodigus is in third place, but it's Eddie Lawson on the charge. Now, Lawson really should be conservative in this race. Lawson on number four has the world championship tied up. All he has to do is be careful. But he said before the start of the race, he is going to run just as hard as he can. He's doing it right now as he comes alongside Derodigus. And it is Eddie Lawson that moves into third place. Ron Haslam is still the leader. Another lap goes to the record. Well, I tell you, Lawson is showing what it's all about. He wants to go to the front no matter what the cost. It's a Britisher out in front, Ron Haslam. Second and third place occupied by Americans. There is Stephanie Sheen, Barry Sheen's new bride. She's the woman who nursed him from his terrible injury. Suffered here. And they got married just a few weeks before this event. Barry Sheen, though, not having his best day as he drops back into sixth place. This machine apparently not working for him. You know, Paul, I think it's still amazing that, that Barry is able to make this good a showing after such a, a horrible accident. Now, here comes Randy Mamola as he moves around Ron Haslam and out in front. Again, the draft, a key factor there. Randy out in front. He was the 1980 winner of this race. He would like to do it again. Now, Americans run in the lead and in third place Eddie Lawson on number four. Eddie Lawson is certainly making a challenge Paul. He tries to pull up alongside but can't quite get by. He's going to go after Mamola at all costs. Randy Mamola using every inch of this very wide, very fast Silverstone circuit. Eddie Lawson now on the charge once again. Ron Haslam tries to hold him off. Again, Eddie Lawson really should ride a conservative race. He's the world champion if he just simply accrues a few points, but that's not his object. Coming into Woodcut, he comes to the inside, comes in alongside Haslam, and Lawson moves into second place and begins now his chase of Randy Mamola. So they started the first of the race in fourth and fifth position. They are now running first and second. Randy Mamola decided he would ride this race on the new V4 bike rather than the three-cylinder that they had done so well with. He says the power is very even, very consistent, and therefore the bike handles well. And it apparently is handling well for him right now, but he's going to need all that power and handling because Eddie Lawson closes up and begins a battle. Paul, it's interesting to watch the body angle, to see the knees out as we find out that that's the way they steer the bike at speed in the wind like that. And they get right behind one another to draft down those straightaways to get the slingshot at the end. Here we see Lawson. Both knees come out. They bend down and drag those knees on the pavement around the turn. This is really something to watch. At the beginning of the race, they'll tape their knees. They'll put a good solid pad on their 
knees, and by the end of the race, most of that pad will be completely worn away. Here comes Eddie Lawson on the charge now as he wants first position and begins to close down behind Randy Mamola. Mamola still leads this race, but Lawson wants it. Raymond Rush pulls it off the course, throws the bike down in disgust. Apparently, his machine has failed him. The battle continues for the lead, though. Here comes Eddie Lawson to the inside, and Lawson takes first place. Well, it just never ceases to amaze me how those bikes maintain traction, leaned over that far around the turn. The tires design very much like an automobile tire, sticky on the sides as well as on the bottom. They can lean them over and they'll still stay well adhered to the circuit. Part of the design by former world champion Kenny Roberts. So now, Eddie Lawson on his way to his first world championship is leading. Randy Mamola is second, Ron Haslam third, Derodigus is fourth, and Barry Sheen is sixth. Now, let's go to our studio in New York. Normally, the countryside around Silverstone, England, is peaceful pasture land. But today, the solitude is split by the roar of the racing motorcycle engine at the British Grand Prix Motorcycle Championships. I'm Paul Page with Johnny Rutherford and Ian Norris. The battle is for the front as Eddie Lawson is trying to hold off Randy Mamola. Two Americans out in front. Yes, Paul, and they pulled away to a pretty substantial lead over the rest of the field. So they're going at it out front all by themselves. There is Eddie Lawson. Lawson. Now he has all the points he needs to simply cruise to a world championship. But he says he likes the high speeds here at Silverstone, and he wanted to run for the front. That's exactly what he's done. He is out in front of this race. Some drivers, John, I've heard you say it, say when you're running fast, you're really not taking risks, that that's the way you ought to run. Well, that's true, Paul. You get on a rhythm. You get your rhythm set up, and you're, you're going the same each time, and it may be quick. If you try to break that rhythm, that's when you can get in trouble. You know, we ran the Indy cars here back in 1978, and this is a very, very fast race course. It is the fastest one that the Grand Prix motorcycles compete on, and it's Randy Mamola that now closes down behind Lawson, begins to try him as he takes just a little different line, bending through Cop's corner. It is Randy Mamola that is in pursuit, and Eddie Lawson has his hands full trying to hold him off. It's interesting to note, too, that these two front riders are both using the new carbon fiber rear disc brakes. Here goes Randy Mamola. He is out in front, the lead back to Mamola. Look at the braking power. Did you see that bike swiggle when he got on the brakes real hard to get down in there, Paul? It's really soft. There, they've hit, they've hit something. Mamola hits a rabbit. Lawson comes on the inside. Because of that, it's Lawson that moves out in front. Mamola ran right flat over a rabbit coming on the straightaway at better than 140 miles an hour. Fortunately, he maintains control, but he can't run fast enough to hold off the charge by Eddie Lawson. So it's Lawson back in front. The fight continues right here at the front of the circuit after a very dangerous moment. Boy, it could have been disastrous. You know, we talk about the aerodynamics of these machines, and earlier, Johnny Rutherford had a chance to look at their design. In auto racing, we're becoming very concerned with ground effects and aerodynamics of the machine. They're starting to, and Grand Prix motorcycles as well. I'm with Randy Mamola, who rides this Honda, and you, maybe you can tell us, Randy, a little bit about what you look for in trying to make this bike get through the air a little better. Well, what they've done in wind tunnel tests is try to get the air up over the rider. As I'm in this position down here, they try to get the air to come straight over the top of the rider and on back, on past the seat. They've done a lot of techniques with the seat and different for aerodynamics. Uh, also, just with my knees sticking on the outside of the fairing, I could lose three to five miles per hour, uh, depending on how far I do put them out. Uh, also, sitting up in this sort of a position where I enter a corner also slows us down quite a, quite a bit. So they do tailor the bike to your body, in fact, so you'll get the best uh, yes, effect. I, yes, they, they, they take us into a wind tunnel, put us on the bike, blow the wind across us, and, and, and learn from there. So there you can see aerodynamics plays a big part in this business as well. Lawson leads Mamola. There you see exactly what he was talking about. They both pop up into the air and actually create an air brake for themselves as they slow for a corner. Yes, Paul, and you can see them stick out that right knee as they go around a right-hand corner to try to steer the bike, turn it into that turn. The Americans are battling in front of the British crowd here as they begin now to come up behind the slower back of the field. That will become a factor as well. It is still Eddie
Eddie Lawson being chased by fellow Californian Randy Mamola. It's still amazing to watch these motorcycles and how they twitch and why they don't come apart, I'll never know, because they're really putting a strain on them. Of course, being a racer, you really have to be wary. Here comes Randy Mamola as he comes around Lawson, and Mamola is back in front. I was about to say, as Lawson comes on the outside, these slower bikes can be a key factor, and you really have to be wary as you come around them. Look at that. As they, oh. they thread the needle. Lawson comes way off the course to the outside, and Mamola right in between two of them, and they're side by side. That is really something. Mamola went right between those two slower bikes, and now he has the lead. And of course, Lawson is putting the pressure on going back into the lead. Of course, no rear view mirrors on these bikes, so you really have to trust that those guys know that you're there, especially when you thread the needle between two of them. Here comes Randy Mamola to the inside again. Lawson continues to hold him out, and the crowd is loving this one. Now, as they come up through the slower traffic, a very dangerous time, but also a very exciting time. Again, they pop up in the air, slow the bike as they come into Cox Corner, and it is still Eddie Lawson out in front of Randy Mamola. Oh, Randy Mamola is going so hard, he went off of the course, and it looked like he bobbled quite badly now. There we see Kel Carruthers, who is Lawson's crew chief, and he's wearing a headset, and that's not to talk to his rider, but to talk to people stationed around the race course that can tell him what they're seeing is going on with the motorcycle. Well, Randy Mamola now riding for all he's worth, trying to catch Eddie Lawson again. He tries him. The draft goes into effect. It works for Randy Mamola as Mamola comes back into the lead, and Lawson has to slide back into second place. But the leaders have completely separated themselves from Ron Haslam, who is currently riding in third place. Yes, Paul, they have a substantial lead now. It's really interesting to watch Mamola and how, when he wants to, he can just squeeze it a little harder and take the lead. Now, let's go to our studio in New York. <laughs> Welcome back to Silverstone. This is Paul Page with Johnny Rutherford and Ian Norris. And already this 500cc race is turning out to be a terrific one. The Americans are showing their dominance. The fight now between Mamola and Lawson. Yes, and of course the Yanks are out front, and that's what counts, I guess, as far as we're concerned. They've been doing a terrific job. The struggle between them back and forth, it's really very exciting. We have seen some great racing here earlier today as well. In the 125cc race, Angel Nito of Spain scored his 89th Grand Prix victory and cinched his 13th World Championship. And then, in the 250cc race, it was a barn burner. Now this is the last lap. Manfred Herwith leads as they head for Abbey Corner. He has a good lead now, assured of a victory. Leans the bike over, heads through Abbey, drops the bike! Manfred Herwith drops his bike! He falls out of the lead, flips across the ground, apparently not seriously injured, but now... Place. Fights with Andy Watts as they come toward the checkered flag. It's Watts and Sarong. Sarong wins it. Watts in second place. These two men had no chance of winning at all. Christian Sarong won a terrific 250cc event. Still to be decided, this 500cc Grand Prix. Randy Mamola leads Eddie Lawson. Two Americans. Lawson trying to put points on the board for his first world championship. But Randy Mamola saying that he would like to once again win the British Grand Prix. Randy Mamola is out in front. Yes, Paul, and he has a pretty good lead over Lawson at this point. A lot bigger lead than he's had all day. Randy Mamola is riding a bike that's new to him. It's the Honda V4. It's apparently working very well, but it seems to be a little skittish in some of the corners. Well, there we see Ron Haslam, who was the early leader of this race, pulling back into the contention again. Traffic definitely working to Haslam's advantage. He is running in third place, but with the slower bikes out in front, they've been slowing the leaders down just a bit, and Haslam running alone has been able to close up. Randy Mamola, again, look at the bike jump just a little bit. They have been working with different tire compounds for this machine. They're on a radial tire that Mamola says is very, very consistent, but it doesn't appear to be so here. Now, part of that may be that they have had to change tires back and forth. It's rained in the early practice, and yesterday, Randy talked about the tire problem. We were planning on trying to uh, two new slick tires, the front and the rear. Uh, we, didn't, we didn't plan on the rain happening in the second session, but it seems to always affect the 500 class. So hopefully, uh, this, since this session will be in the rain, that uh, we will get uh, rain tomorrow for the race. 
Well, that was his hope of yesterday. Unfortunately for him, it's a clear day here, though it did rain this morning, but the Grand Prix has been run entirely on the dry, so Randy Mamola has two unknown factors, a bike that he is not entirely familiar with and tires that they have not had the chance to fully test here at Silverstone. A rider off. That's Paul Lewis's machine off into the hay bales. Lewis is down just a few feet in front of the bike, and they're running to him to give him aid. He did not climb up immediately. So Paul Lewis, who is running in eighth place, off his bike and receiving help at the edge of the circuit. Boy, Paul, that's got to be something to fall off of one of those things going that fast, slide into a hay bale. There's no telling what. We hope he's certainly not hurt. But there you can see our leader, and he's really squeezing all he can out of the bike. He's putting some slower bikes between he and Lawson at this point. His advantage. Tactics a key factor at this point of the race. If he can stay out of contact with second place, he can begin to lengthen out his lead. Paul Lewis, by the way, fell off on a section of the course that they normally run through at 140 miles an hour. Ooh there you can see uh, our leader again, Mamola, going by slower bikes. He's got two more bikes between him and Austin now, so he's building up a little cushion. Yeah, well, watch Randy Mamola. There you see it again as he begins to slow down, use the brakes. The bike wobbles back and forth. You have to wonder, are the tires working, or when they hit the rabbit, did it damage the bike? We'll be back with the finish right after this. We're back to closing laps now. Finish Grand Prix. There's Randy Mamola, and look the way that bike handles back and forth. It could be one of several things. The bike might be damaged as a result of hitting the rabbit earlier. The tires might not be working as well as they could. Or Randy could simply be running totally flat out and throwing the bike around to stay away from Eddie Lawson. Well, Paul, I think it's a combination of the last two myself. I think he's just riding the wheels off of it. But it looks like that rear tire might have gone off just a little bit and is not giving him the traction that he wants when he gets her laid down sideways. Well, for the moment of lead, Lawson has eliminated back marker traffic and has a clear shot at the leader, Randy Mamola, who comes across the stripe with just one lap to go. Heads down toward Cop's Corner. The yellow flag for Paul Lewis's accident. Now the marshals pull it away. The course is clear ahead of them. They can run to the checkered flag. It is Lawson in hot pursuit of Randy Mamola. Yes, Paul, but Randy is coming up on a whole gaggle of slow bikes, and it should be that Lawson's trying to position him himself to where he can take advantage of that. Earlier in the event, Lawson used slower traffic definitely to his advantage. Now remember, Mamola's bike does not appear to be handling quite as well as Lawson. So this traffic that they're now encountering, there you see a whole string of slower machines in front of them. This could be a key factor. This is the last lap. Can Randy Mamola hold on? Lawson continues to close down. Mamola has a lot of traffic in front of him as he handles it through Stowe Corner. Less than half a lap to go now. He looks back and sees Lawson in the chase. Yes, he's looking back to check on Lawson because he knows that if Lawson can sneak up on him and he's got all these bikes to pass, he could lose it right in the final stage. Randy Mamola way off onto the concrete apron again. Remember the last lap of the 250cc race. And Ron Haslam is both up in third place as well. So can Randy Mamola make it to the checkered? He comes under the express bridge. Woodcut Corner is in front of him. So is slower traffic. Lawson closes down. There's Paul Lewis. He is up and all right. Eddie Lawson takes his charge now. But he doesn't get it done. Randy Mamola wins the bridge.